Hello, everybody. Welcome back. This is Tinker77. We're back on the Craftoria world. We're actually in the mining dimension, and uh, I've been AFK for quite a long time. Everybody on the server probably saw that. It's almost two days worth of AFK time because I was doing other things. You know, I do have a regular life. I have to go to work and everything, so I just kind of let it run. And uh, I'm going to show you what we got because last time we built this at the end, I've actually augmented the power a little bit um, in my spare time, so we get a little bit uh, faster rates and sort of thing, and it's still running. I did change the range on this to be going up to and so it can get a copper because I was out of copper. I figured I want to make it a little bit higher in the uh, world. And it's still got 34,000 has to get. Um, but inside of this barrel here, this one's empty. Uh, but this one here that I've, up, I've updated it with some stack tier uh, four upgrades. And uh, these are pretty easy to make once I had some resources. You can see I've got a lot of stuff. <laughs> Look at the copper. I've got th four stacks full of 16.3 thousand. We've got so much copper. We're not going to need copper anymore. Uh, lots of diamonds and things. So this has been running for quite a while. You can see we have lots of resources. Uh, I don't know how I'm going to get all this back to the main part of the base. I may not even need to. But uh, it's been running great. And you can see we've got a lot of resources. I still have to smelt stuff down and that sort of thing. But uh, that's going to be coming in the future. Let's get back to the base. As I mentioned in the previous episode, this thing is kind of buggy. And I don't really care for this storage idea. I mean, it works for now. And it does. it's better than just regular chests. But I really want to get into uh, AE, Applied Energistics, which is the system that allows me to have little disks and things. And it's much more robust than the system that's right here. So I've got to figure out a way uh, to get that working. And one of the big things I have is a problem with is having power. I do need to have power to run that. And I don't really have a power system right now. I just have this as a coal generator. And I mean, obviously, you don't want to run the coal generator. Uh, it's running some mechanism things. But I don't have any power. So I think what I'm going to work on today is working in the power mod. This is a mod that is used for uh, power generation and, and power storage. And I think I'm going to start to work on this today to see how high and how far we can get with getting uh, the various things needed to get that. We're going to have to have energy storage. We're going to have to have energy creation. And then after that, um, we can use energy for whatever we want, including AE. So let me look at what I want to do with this, and we're going to get started in just a sec. Looking at the power mod, I see three different ways that you can generate energy okay the first one is with the furnator series this is like furnaces and you know there's different levels of it but basically what these do is they burn a like coal or some other thing like wood or something like that to generate energy so it's not a renewable source it just kind of uses whatever you feed it okay so that means we'd have to have some sort of farm or some sort of way to generate coal or wood or whatever the next one is similar it's called the magmator or magmatter whatever you want to call call it and uh, it also uses a uh, resource which is lava and we do have a way of getting lava, but that, again, you'd have to make sure that you have it fed all the time with lava and never shut down if you have a problem. The other one is the generators, and the generators actually just need to be placed on or near a heat source, and then it just continually generates energy. So if I go into this right here, the thermo generator, <coughs> and I'm going to hit unclick on that, I'm going to hit U for uses, you can see right here it brings up a bunch of stuff, and one of them is heat sources. Now, there are various heat sources. There is the magma block, which is goes up to 800 celsius then there's the regular lava which is a thousand and then of course the blazing crystal which eventually you get through the power mod you can get this system so i'm thinking that that's probably what i want to do is i want to just maybe i can go get some magma blocks i probably have some and i can start this out with this and then once i get to a point where i get can get the block of blazing crystal i can just substitute that for the magma blocks and we should be good to go so i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to try to work on getting through the thermo generator series let's try to make uh at least one of these you need dielectric paste first of all so let's click on that and there's different recipes for this uh, you get more if you use this method but you use more resources but it does use a lava bucket and this way uses a uh, blaze and you can see i could do that right now but i my blaze is a little bit limited whereas a lava bucket isn't so let's see about getting some lava here so if i go to a bucket and we have two of them uh, i'm going to go over to where we have lava being uh, produced over here i just sometimes i just do this i walk over this spot here i break this block and uh, i really should have this accessible uh, up above but i've got two blocks like that and then uh yeah we should be good to go and so now let's make some dielectric paste we should be able to make two of that right so because we have two lava buckets there we go we have a bunch of the dielectric paste in there that's awesome now we need to make also these thermo plates so how do you make that again it is with blaze and you have to use blaze and i can't do that yet because probably i don't have the basic capacitor 
How do you make a basic capacitor? It's two from, uh, these are the tiny ones. We need a regular one, which is a block of redstone. Some of the dielectric paste we just made and some iron. So I probably need to make a couple of the uh, redstone blocks. Let's do that. We got plenty of redstone now. And uh, let's make a few of these capacitors. I'll make uh, maybe 16 of those. And so now we just need to make some tiny ones. Let's make some tiny from the larger ones. There we go. Let's make some thermal plates. We need, uh, what do we need? Probably blaze. I'm imagining that I don't have enough blaze in here. And so let's uh, take the blaze rods and let's uh, make some blaze. I got some more blaze rods from the mob farm, so that's good. And uh, we're gonna make the plates. One, two, three, there we go. And I think we're almost there. We have to make the dielectric casing. I'm gonna bookmark this because we gotta make a bunch of this actually. You need dielectric rods that are horizontal and vertical and the way you do that is with the iron bars and the dielectric paste so i'm going to make some of the horizontal ones i'm going to make some of the vertical ones basically the same recipe and then we're going to make the uh dielectric casing here we go and now we should be able to make a thermo generator the starter level it's really really basic okay i have one magma block i'm going to grab that and put it into my inventory. We're gonna go find a place for this. Uh, I don't really have a place figured out yet for power generation, so maybe I'll just put something over here temporarily and we'll make this little corner for power or power generation and storage. Let's do that. We'll just do something over here. Let's put this magnet block down here and I'm gonna put the starter over on top of it and I believe this should start to generate energy. So I tried to set this up and get it to work, but then I found out something that I didn't know is that the thermal generator does use a heat source, but you have to have a fluid, which is like water or something. Now, normally I would do something like get a sink. A sink is a basically an uh, uh, infinite water source, but if you look here, it says it doesn't provide infinite water. So I don't know of a way right now to get infinite water. So again, we're gonna be limited on what we need to get this to work. So this is probably not the right option. And that's something I wanted you to see because I do make mistakes. I figure something out and then figure it out that it doesn't work. I have to go a different route. So we're not going to use the thermal generator. What we are going to use though, I guess now is the magma tour because we do have lava and this will produce uh, energy from the lava. So yes, this is something we're going to have to work with. And we're going to try to make this right now. Again, we need to make a dielectric casing, which we have the risk, uh, the ingredients for. Uh, we have to make, I should really bookmark this. There we go, bookmark. And uh, we have the, the capacitors, we have the dielectric casings, we have, or sorry, the uh, paste and the bucket. So there, now we have a magmator. Great. And this should then generate power. Now, it does have, over here, we have where our, of our lava is coming through, and that's where the system is. I could pipe it over there. That's a possibility, and maybe I will do that. That's, that's fun. Let's just do that. Um, I'm going to set this up over in this area. This is where I wanted my power generation. And so I'm going to set up uh, the, this right here. And now i got to figure out, I'm going to put like a tank over here, run a line so we can fill it up and get it filled up for lava to run for our power system. So let me go get a tank and set up the pipe. All right, we're going to do a little bit of a change of direction. Because as I was thinking about this, I've run pipes before. Everybody's done that. Run pipes for from the lava source that's in here. Run it over to there where I wanted to set up for the, uh, the lava but I don't wanna use lots of pipes this season. I'd rather use something wireless. For the wireless, I'm gonna to try to use Laser IO. This is a great system that uses wireless technology to do items, fluids, energy, redstone signals, and chemicals. And I'm not sure if lava counts as chemical or if it counts as fluid. I'm gonna assume as fluid. So I'm gonna work on this, I think, today more or less. So I have the transport of the lava, then we can go into working on power probably in the next episode. So let's kind of start and figure this out. So usually you have these laser connectors and laser nodes. A node is an access point. A connector is kind of like a relay to transmit the data. And then you have a wrench to configure it. So let's make the wrench first. And you can see it takes iron. We have that. It takes a logic chip. So let's get the logic chip. And that is a raw logic chip. So let's look at that. And you can see it takes gold nuggets, redstone, clay, and blocks of quartz. Now, blocks of quartz is really easy. I've got a bunch of quartz from the nether, so let's create a stack of that from our inventory. And uh, is that enough to make the uh, chip here? Let's see. Uh, there we go. I'm gonna make a bunch of these because we're gonna need a lot so that we can make 36 of them. And uh, I think you just gotta put them over here and cook them down. I've got a few here. I'll let this uh, continue to work while we work with this part. So what we wanna do again, we're trying to make the wrench and I didn't bookmark that. 
So it is a laser wrench, and now we should be able to have that and configure that so that we can use it. Okay, that's excellent. Now let's figure out uh, what we want. We want to have a node, so it takes uh, a laser connector. So we're going to have to get that first. So let's get a few of these. Um, I'm going to make probably eight of these so we have them because we might need them to relay the signal. I'm not sure how far they usually go. And we're going to need a node. And I probably need the glass, right? The panes. There we go. So it's probably that. So let's make uh, make a stack of glass panes. There we go. And now we're going to make the laser node. And we need at least two of these right now for what we're trying to do. So I'm going to make two of those. We know that those are the access points. So one will be at the tank where we have lava. One is where we're sending the tank for the lava. We're also going to need probably a fluid card. I'm not sure if we need two of these. So I'm going to make two anyway. So there's one. And it looks like we need a bucket. So let's make another bucket really fast here and make the other fluid card. So that should be, I think, all that we need for this. I hope uh, we need some of those connectors again. I got to make sure I have that in my inventory and uh, let's just grab all of those. Did it not grab them? It didn't. So that's another one of these things. Sometimes it doesn't grab things correctly. All right, let's figure out how we're going to do this. Over where I want to have my power set up, we have the Magmator and the tank. This is going to be the tank that is going to be receiving lava from way over there. OK, so let's see about doing something here. We're going to obviously have the uh, access point, the the node. I'm going to put it on top for this. So it's going to be facing or feeding downward into it. So now I've got this card here and I want to take a look at this card. And what we're saying is this should be insert default. I'm not sure if it tells what it what it's going to be. I'm going to put it on a different channel. This is like a color. This is like um, to show what is what what's going where I'm going to make it orange. That means it's kind of like lava. And I believe that's all I need to do for this little card, okay? So the card should be configured correctly. So now I'm going to put the node on top, and I'm going to put the card in. And it actually puts it in a different spot that you don't want sometimes. I want to go down, inserting downward. And you can kind of see it has a link here. And that's, that's what I wanted to see, okay? So then we're going to do the same thing on the other side over there, but set it up as being going up extracting. So let's set up the card right now to do that. Might as well. So the card here will be extracting, and we're going to say on channel, uh, the orange one, the channel, and that should be all we need to do. And when we insert it into the node over there, we can tell which side we want. OK, we've put the node down right next to the tank with 32 buckets of lava, and we're going to put this card in. Now, we got to figure out what direction that is. It looks like I'm right now I'm facing. Uh, I don't even know what direction I'm facing. Let's press F3 here. And what does it say? We're facing west. So we want on the west side here, which I, I guess you could look to up top of here to see that the, this is where the that's kind of a nice feature. It tells you what is in that direction. We want the lava and we're going to hit the extract. OK, so this should be now you can see the line going across. It should be extracting lava. And now we just have to link up between the two systems. I'm not sure of the range for this, so I'm going to set up a couple of points here and just give it a shot. So right here, I've got a little hole and I'm going to put the uh, one of the laser connectors in there. And now we're going to try to connect this up. I should be able to use this with this wrench. I haven't used this in a while, but I think all you do is you, you shift right click on it. And that's the first part of it. And then you go over to the other block. And I think you just have to right click on it again. OK, so we hit that and I did not work. I shift right click. Do I just right click on the other one? OK, let's do that. Connection exceeds maximum range of eight. That's what I was afraid of. So I've set up these relays and I probably will bury these in a little bit. But basically they have a range and I believe there are eight blocks. So I'm going to see if this works. This is just to test this out before I bury it. So I'm going to go down here with the wrench. I'm going to shift right click and you can see that it turned green. And that means it's the first of all that the, like one of the blocks of a link. And then I'm going to right click on here. And you can kind of see a little red line. That's the laser portion of laser IO and it's connected to there. And I should be able to go shift right click on that and point it to here. To here and there's a laser link. So you can see the link is going along and we're going to continue this all the way over. So do that and go to here and keep on going and over to here. And you can see it's kind of linking everything up together. I think it's eight blocks. It might be more than that. I don't know. But this is what I just did for this test. And there we go. We did that. And you can see immediately because we configure our cards, the, the lava is now coming into this bucket. So this is linked to that system over there. I buried the lines. You can't see the little laser, but it is going all the way over here. And you can barely see that it's coming up from 
this little line right down here. It's actually buried right underneath this block. So now we have this lava is all set up going into this tank. And my imagining of this system is that there will be a lot of these magma tours over here that will generate uh, the power. So let's get out of the lava out of here. This is a fluid fright pipe from pipes. And I'm going to go and shift on this section right here and put it into extract mode. And you can see it is filling this up with lava and this should be then generating power and it is so this system will work just fine now again it's generating only 20 fe per tick that's not a lot uh, we will eventually upgrade these to better uh magma tours but we got to go through like a series of progressions uh to get there but this is looking really nice and we can make a few more of these and this will be our power generation if you look at this magma tour you see it has 20,000 stored fe 20,000 20k that's not a lot um, so what would be nice is to have some sort of extra storage that's external to this that we can then pull energy from. It's usually a good idea to have buffers between your sources to where you're using it. We use the tanks for a buffer between the lava source and where we're using it. We need something like that over here. So we're going to go over to the storage system and build something else. The starter level for uh, power for energy storage is the energy cell. And you can see it stores a million FE. So we're going to make this. And this should be fairly easy. Probably need another dielectric casing. And there we go. And I wish it would tell you what you need, but obviously we've covered that. So we're going to need that. And we also need from pipes. I would like to have a way to pipe out the energy to it. So we're going to basically make uh, the energy pipe here. It takes some redstone blocks. And we have redstone now, so that's good. And uh, there we go. And I already have the wrench from pipes with me. So let's get this hooked up over here. So we're going to place down the... Uh, starter energy cell right here and you can see uh, it doesn't really show you anything unless you right click on it and it says it has a 1 million fe of storage and it can do 1k of fe per tick i think that's output i'm not quite sure so what we're going to do here is we're going to put an energy pipe and we're going to set it to extract and this should then be filling this up and you can see it is slowly filling up with power and that's what we want to see. I could make this pipe pump faster or extract faster, but uh, it's right now it's doing great. We're not using power anyway, so what does it does it really matter? Um, and you can see it's draining the battery from here, but this will then slowly only generate 20 FE per tick. And so this is going to go up very slowly, but it will start to store power while we're doing other things. So that is our basically the buffer to our energy system. The power mod is a very like a tier oriented. And what I mean by that is that you have, for instance, the starter tier and then there's a level up for the magma tour, which is basic. And then you have hardened blazing, niotic spirited and nitro and each of these does better than the previous tier so as an example this base or starter is great does 20 uh store 20 000 storage 80 max fe per tick and it only generates 20 fe per tick but if you go up one wow this now generates 80 this is basically four times the amount of the uh basic right or the starter i mean basic is four times of the starter so let's see what you would take to do this and what you're going to see here is it just takes the starter pack and that's great and some better capacitors you know bigger capacitors it makes sense right well then if you go to the next level you can see it starts to get to other things energized steel and this is where there's another feature of power that we'll have to get to so as we go through these tiers we'll have to use this other subset of features from power and that is the energizing orb which basically this energizing thing uh, uses this little platform and these like, I don't know what you call these rods, but they're like antennas that transit power. If you put a piece of iron and a piece of gold in and you give it a bunch of energy, it then makes energized steel. And then there's other forms of that because we needed, like I said, energized steel for the hardened. For blazing, you need blazing crystals. And for niotic, you'll need to make niotic crystals and then spirited are spirited crystals. And then, of course, nitro takes nitro crystals go figure so as you slowly generate more energy to make these as an example let's see it takes nether stars and 20 million fe just to make this so you can see you have to produce more energy to then make the next tier which gives you more energy it kind of goes down the whole way the same thing works for the uh, storage you have your star starter cell you know you got this one can store 4 million 10 million 40 million 100 million 400 million and the next one up here is 2 billion FE. Okay, so there's a lot of different things we need to do. And that's something that I will work on uh, making probably in the off camera time is working on doing this whole system. But let's try to do energized steel right now since we have some power, we have an ability and I can try to show you how this is done. 
So we're going to make some of these energizing rods. These are just a starter rods. They're pretty easy to make. And it looks like I need more casings. We'll probably need three of these casings. And we ran out of materials for it. You can see that. So we're going to make eight of the horizontal and eight of the vertical. Okay. So we'll make another rod. There's one. And where'd they go? There they are. Okay, there's another one. And what am I making now? I need another casing probably? No. Yes. <laughs> there's two more of those casings. So we can make three of these rods. I found that three is what you need. I may be wrong, but that's how I've always done it. And there are our three energizing rods. Now you can use, uh, there are cables. I wish this thing would pull it down correctly. Uh, okay, come on, give me that. I'll just stack them in different locations. I don't know why I didn't stack in there. Um, you can use, they have their own version of energy cables. So let's make that too, just because we can. Uh, it looks like we need iron nuggets, I think. Do I not have an iron nuggets? Really? Okay, let's grab, uh, that's, is that's iron? Yes. Let's grab some nuggets. Okay, there we go. Back to power. And uh, we were trying to make um, the cable. This is like their version of energy cables. I am missing some, oh, that's the previous one. Never mind, making the basic one. And what else am I missing here? More capacitors, maybe? Okay, I had thought it was the iron nuggets, but I guess I was wrong. And we're trying to make the starter cable. Probably these horizontals is what's just causing me to get hung up here. Okay, there we have some energy cables, and then we need to have that the base of that machine. Um, so that is the energizing orb. And you can see it probably takes another casing, which we're probably missing horizontal again. Once you get this kind of done, you, you know, you, and you're making... Oh, maybe it takes verticals. Uh... Uh, I don't have enough of something. Probably the paste. I don't know. Yeah, paste. Well, oh, gee, we're running out of resources. Where is dielectric paste? Let's make uh, some more of this. Um, I think I'm actually out of clay, too. It always helps to have the material. Yeah, I'm out of clay. So I'm going to go get some clay, make some more dielectric paste. But you see where I'm going with this is that once we have all these pieces, i got to get the last little piece of the energizing orb. We can then make the energizing or energized uh, steel. Get some clay. There we go. Okay, we're going to make uh, some dielectric paste here. And that's we made 16. That should be fine. So now we're back to working on power. And we needed to make, if I recall, we're trying to make the energizing orb here. And we still can't do it because we're missing horizontal rods or the casing, I think it was, right? And we're trying to make vertical. There we go. Here's the vertical. And then we should be able to make a casing. Here we go. Casing. And then we make the... Uh, energizing orb. Okay, so we should have everything we want to do uh, to make this thing work. Let me get a piece of iron and a gold also so I can show you making that uh, thing that we want to make, the energizing steel. One iron, and we'll do another gold here. There's a gold ingot. Okay, so let's go over to our power. Okay, I'm going to run power out of the battery and down to here, and then I'm going to go over one more, and I'm just going to put like this. I usually do this kind of a setup, and then I take the uh, energizing rods, and I put them on top of those. So I just do it like this. I go click and click and click. And then right in front of the for one that's right in the middle, I usually put the energizing orb. Okay, and there we go. It's kind of like a little like a crystal ball, but it's not a ball. It's a square. But it's called an orb. I don't know. Uh, who knows? But then what you do is you right click the ingredients that you want to put into it. And if it matches the recipe, it will then convert it. So I'm going to put the iron in and you can see nothing happens. But when I put the gold in, it should zap it. There it goes. It's working on it. And you can see it's got a percentage. And when it gets done, we have energized steel. And I wanted to show you that. So th this type of method is used a lot to upgrade the power systems. And that's what I'll probably be doing off camera in between episodes is upgrading power, upgrading storage, using it to make the new type of material that we need and keep on going until we have or I can't do anything. Probably before I get to nether stars, I'll have to stop. And so, guys, you can see that I have basically a power system set up here. And like I said, I'm going to just upgrade that over time before the next episode. So speaking of episodes, I sure hope you liked this one. We had a little bit of change of direction there by going to laser I.O. for a little bit, but I like that idea, and it keeps us from using pipes everywhere and burying pipes, because that's a pain, too. So, yeah, I sure hope you liked this video. If you did, please click that like button. If you have any comments, put them down in the comment section. And if you have to be notified of the videos that I produce, please subscribe to this channel, and don't forget to hit, to hit that little bell icon so you get all the notifications. I'm having trouble speaking today. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Have a good day. Bye-bye.